Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today I've got another unboxing video for you guys. And this is another book unboxing, which has become quite common on my channel, surprisingly, despite my channel being mainly focused on Godzilla action figures. Nonetheless, let's get right into it. So, if I am correct, which I am 99.99% .99 sure I am, because I don't recall ordering anything else that this could have been, this should be a book of art works by the Japanese sculptor Takayuki Takeya. He's a Japanese sculptor, does a lot of um, action figures and stuff like that, similar to Yuji Sakai in that regard, where he does a lot of uh, really cool stuff for various figures. He did the Figma alien figure, and this Kyoto Godzilla figure, which is actually the maquettes that they used to design Shin Godzilla, or the CGI version of Shin Godzilla in that film, so yeah, really cool. And in here we should have one of his art books. So, let's snip it open. I'm really excited to see this, because I already have the art of Shin Godzilla, which I actually have right here, which has a lot of his work in it as well, so if I quickly can just find it... There we go, we've actually got that same figure that I got here, the same sculpture. Big Shin Godzilla here. And here are some work in progress shots of him making it. So yeah, already got some of his art from Shin Godzilla specifically, but he does a lot of other stuff. He did the Attack on Titan films, he also did uh, a little short with the same directors of Shin Godzilla called... Um, Giant Warrior Attacks Tokyo or something like that. It's basically the Giant Warrior from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And he, you know, it's just a bunch of cool stuff. So, let's take a look. Okay, so, this is a soft back book. I could feel it when this package arrived, because it's, you know, just a floppy paper packaging around with bubble wrap. And just a bit bigger than A4 size. Really nice. Let's get this thing open. You can already see I've got the cover of the book, which has Shin Godzilla's grotesque tail thing with all the weird creepy stuff coming out of it at the end of the movie as the cover. Because even though Shin Godzilla was entirely CGI during that movie, the only part of him that was actually used as a physical prop was this the end shot of his tail. That was a real sculpture. Everything else was CGI but still based on the actual design that Takeya sculpted, which is pretty sweet. So if I can <laughs> get this bubble wrap off. I'm really excited to have a look at this. What I'll probably end up doing, just like my other book um, reviews, I should, I don't even know what to call it, but my other book vid videos on various art books is I'll probably do a separate video after this depicting like a full-on slideshow of this book from front to back so you can actually get a really good look at it uh, as if you actually own the book and we're just kind of having like a digital flick through if that makes sense but uh, for now I'll just kind of go through it quickly with you guys and see what I my initial thoughts on it are so this is all in Japanese so I don't actually remember what the the title of this book is so it will be in the description what I bought it as I bought it from Tokyo Japan on eBay the back we've got this uh, cool drawing of this weird archway it looks really sweet actually and there's a a creature behind there and a little little person standing there it's really cool very H.R. Giger-esque kind of art style which is pretty pretty awesome we've got these same sort of structures on the side of this thing kind of like Shin Godzilla has going down the back of his tail which is really sweet so it's just as wrapped up in a thin piece of plastic, which is very good, that they actually went that extra effort. If we can get it out of here, I can take a closer look. So I just took it out of the plastic, and it's a nice feeling book. It's all nice and matte, has this matte paper feel to it. Again, soft cover, matte paper feel. Looks really nice, and it has this, this um, band of paper running around the front of it, like this little tiny dust cover. It's actually kind of cool. The image from the back of it kind of is completed on this little strip. So let's take a look. There we got a little look at his studio, which is really nice. Lots of uh, 
face sculpts there. This little paper thing. I don't know why this is here. It, I guess it just adds some extra text, but yeah, kind of, kind of random. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Actually, geez, this has another dust cover. Look at that. Okay, so this whole front thing with the Shin Godzilla uh, tail is another dust cover, and in here is the actual book. Ah, that's it. That's a, a really interesting thing. It's got like two dust cover. <laughs> so there's the uh, the the inner cover of the book, which has this weird drawing of um some sort of bizarre insectoid-like monster, very much in uh, Takeya's style. It actually reminds me a lot of some of the weird shit that I used to draw in high school. I'm gonna do a video about all my um, art and stuff eventually, because I've been spending quite a while scanning all my old drawings in, and I drew some really weird and interesting stuff back in the day. Uh, but look at that! He's got little Godzilla Lego things here, and some like old photographs of him, and some Dead animals, which is lovely. Oh, and the doggy. So so that's the like actual cover of the book. Take a quick look at the one that we took off. So yeah, again, it's lovely matte paper feel to it. This front cover thing. And in here we've also got some other little adverts for other books, I guess, is what that's about. I'm not sure if they're all Takeya sculpture books, but it's all sculpture related. And we got this weird little... Again, paper sleeve bit here. Yeah, nicely released book. It feels really professionally made and very fancy. And it's got a nice thickness to it. It's not super thin, which is great. It's not the thickest book either. It was a bit pricey for a book, but I really wanted it. <laughs> now, so we'll just do a little flick through. So you guys can see so far we just got probably introductory text. It's all in Japanese, this book again, which is a little bit of a shame if you don't read Japanese like me. I'm guessing this is the table of contents. We've got this lovely, um, lovely creepy lady with the six arms. <laughs> Love the little sketches in here. And ah, uh, already we have a, a Kamatakun. That's so sweet. Kamatakun there, and we got. Looks like Hideaki Anno and Shinji Haguchi taking photos of the Kamatakun maquette that they used in making Shin Godzilla. They're the directors of the film, which is really sweet. We can see some behind the scenes stuff there. Ah, uh, nice. More Kamatakun. Very, very similar, if not identical, to what we've got in the Art of Shin Godzilla book so far. But I was real, I was really wanting to see some more more shots of these designs. So this is really cool. And there we got the big guy here, final form of Shin Godzilla, which is, again, this Kyoto figure is an exact replica of this figure. So you can see in person how big the, the thing is. He's like, I don't know, 40, 50 centimeters tall. It's a huge, huge sculpture. So that's really cool there. We got more more of a look at what this, uh, this the, the original one looked like. There we go. Got the tail. Look at that. That freaking beautiful tale. What I'm liking about this book so far, compared to the art of Shin Godzilla, so far there's barely any text in here, which, you know, text in books is great and all, I know, but if you don't read Japanese like me, then I want pictures, especially in an, an art book, in a sculpture book. And here we got uh, some of those initial drawings. I don't know if all of these are Takeya's, because uh, I know that somebody else actually did the, the drawing designs of Shin Godzilla and then Takeya is the one they brought in to do the maquette sculpture. But there's a definite huge influence from his art style on the final version of Godzilla because they're, they're not really quite the same, uh, the, the initial drawings and the final design. So yeah, interesting. We got uh, the making of Kamatakun here, which is really cool. It's like this interesting process that he's got going on when he's making these various maquettes and sculptures where it looks like a lot of the little uh, pieces uh, were sculpted separately and then like resin castings were made and then they were stuck into the bigger version which he made at the end. So like uh, it looks like there's some little bits of like actual bone textured stuff embedded in his back. All the spines look like they were made separately and then were stuck into this thing and then it's like this interesting process which is really cool. It's not all just made in one go. 
as it were, out of one chunk of clay at one time. It's kind of made over time, if that makes sense. And we've got more Kamatakun, more of the detailing of the builds. This is really sweet. I love seeing all these details. I've actually got the X Plus Kamatakun uh, right here, so we can see that they're actually really close. Um, <laughs> these, these figures here actually look almost identical. I wonder if... Oh, no, no, there, there's definite differences, so they didn't just flat out, this isn't just a recast of this thing by the looks of it. But, I, yeah, but, um, very similar to the one that they actually made for the full on X Plus figure, which is nice. So it's always really tricky to kind of show all of this to you guys again, because, I don't know, just getting the angles and stuff to work. But again, I'm going to do a separate video where it's just like literally a montage of all the, the book. Uh, in better detail, so don't worry about that. This is just kind of my like in initial reaction to it. Um, we get all even more Kamatakun and like the making of process and all these sort of like sort of like pink resin chunks or something like that. Really sweet. Uh, his face is so creepy. I would love to get like copies of the the Kamatakun, and now we have Shinagawa Kun, which is the the third form of Shin Godzilla that sort of intermediate form between his weird larval stage and his final design. But yeah, I really love all of the, the various Shin Godzilla forms. I, that was one of the things in the movie that was just like really weird to watch, but I ended up absolutely loving it. It was very fresh, very cool. And I want, I really need a Shinagawa coin in my collection. I've, I've got the monster arts, but damn, I wish I had something more akin to this exact sculpture. That would be so, so sweet. I hope they did. They do release something like that. Got like these spine bits, and here we got more the making of the final form. So again, we have these drawings here, which I'm not entirely sure if they were by the the sculptor or if they were different artists. I think there was some some about the, the different artist doing the again the design and the sculpture, but. It's still really cool to see that. They might be his design since they are in his book, but we got the, the, the making of his face here. Looking really cool. More of those shots of him actually making the rest of the body here and all these bits. It's got the arms that look like they're made separately and then slotted in and different stuff like that. And there we got like the whole body there being put together. And again, and again, it turns out to be this exact sculpture, which is so sweet. Love it. Got some designs for Shin Godzilla's open mouth, which is looking really cool. And, uh, yeah, more, more of this sculpture and the tail. And I'm just loving the amount of, of drawings that are in this thing. It's really nice. Really good to see. And, oh god, look at that creepy tail. It, it actually... That that wasn't didn't happen in the movie quite like that quite so intensely, but the the tip of the tail is so open it looks so grotesque with the weird humanoid jaws in there that is fucked up. Oh my god! Here we have the final figure and it's being painted the final sculpture. So yeah, this is again identical to the Kyoto Shin Godzilla figure, which is right behind the book. Really freaking awesome, and ah, oh, it looks so cool. If you're looking for a lot of Shin Godzilla behind the scenes stuff, then this book, or rather, this is the cover you're gonna see um, listed everywhere. This book is definitely gonna have you feeling satisfied because this is so far, I'm actually enjoying this probably more than I was enjoying the Art of Shin Godzilla book as a whole. And this thing was, despite being a pretty pricey book, is actually. A lot cheaper than that and it has seems to have a lot more photos and behind the scenes stuff of at least the specific sculpture and arts art part of it which is like personally my favorite thing about all the behind the scenes and making of an art of books so here we got the tail the whole thing about the tail and we got some concept art concept sculptures for the humanoids that are actually coming out of his tail so these are the more sort of weird angelic humanoid looking ones i say angelic i kind of mean that as a reference to neon genesis evangelion rather than like actual very pretty looking angels they're really grotesque in this thing this looks pretty accurate to the ones that we actually saw in the film at least the still image of them as they're coming out of the tail. Really creepy looking with that like 
hole in their head and the skull like structures and just this humanoid body plan and this one's really weird it looks like he has a big stab wound in his chest the other ones don't seem to have oh no it's the same one it seems to have that so it does have that yeah it's so weird but yeah really good look at those keep going uh, here we here we get a lot of detail of the making of this weird tail sculpture. Oh, that is so cool. There's all these like actual bones in there. It's still being assembled and painted and put together. So again, you'll see this in better detail uh, later on when I actually do the when I actually do the the montage of this book. So don't worry about that. Oh yeah, more of the tail there, more of these big structures, the weird humanoid teeth in there. Oh, that's so gross looking and creepy, but it's so awesome, and it really, like, the ending of Shin Godzilla was just such a, oh, it, it left me speechless, especially the first time I saw it. It was just like, whoa, it left an impact, more so than pretty much any other kaiju film that I've seen to date. So that's why I love this film, or one of the part, reasons why I loved it. We get the more, you can see it coming together. It's quite a large sculpture by the look of it. Okay. I'm guessing this is where the Shin Godzilla section ends, which, to let you guys know, that's more, it's less than half of the book, but more than a third of the book seems to be just about Shin Godzilla, which is really sweet, and that covers about 54 pages, so... Yeah, you get your bulk of Shin Godzilla. Assuming that moving on to other stuff here, since it looks like they are. There we go. We got Attack on Titan, the live-action films. Got that colossal Titan, which is really, really creepy and cool design. Like, say what you will about the film itself, but the designs in it, like the actual effects and, and that stuff, was top-notch. And definitely the colossal Titan stands out. So here we got some really cool shots of this really... Really grotesque and creepy, muscular and skinless thing that they had in the film that just looks really, really, really freaking weird, but really well done. Some lovely shots of it in here. Look at that. It goes on for a couple of pages, and there we have a bunch of concept art designs. Just doing some scaling and stuff and looking really freaking gross with the tiny head, the huge shoulders and body and these really massive legs. Just a really freaky design, isn't it? But I love these pencil sketches. I'm really glad they included these because uh, this is some awesome stuff, seeing all this behind the scenes stuff like this. We've got what looks like a bunch of sketches kind of detailing the pose that he has in that main sculpture and... Oh, he's eating a human in this one, looking really freaking <laughs> funny, actually. Oh, man. And we got a bust of the face here. Or maybe it's just a, it's a smaller part of the bigger sculpture, I'm not sure. Looking really nice, though. This section seems to be just detailing this one concept sculpture, so you're definitely going to see a lot of stages of its development and bits of it and... Ah, uh, there he's making the, the base of this sort of crumbling building at the bottom and all the, the resin bits of the sculpture up here. Yeah. More shots of the same Attack on Titan sculpture. And here we come to the giant warrior from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Again, looking really similar. Like, he's got this very typical sort of lanky humanoid art style again very similar to the, the angels or evas from neon genesis evangelion which makes sense cause collaborates with the akiano on a lot of these projects but yeah you can you can see that there uh, i do recommend checking out this film it's um just a, a really short film it just basically demonstrates their uh the use of modern practical effects and this thing is really cool to see it's a really trippy little film that ties in, loosely ties into Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, but set in modern day of when the, this thing like first attacks. It's a really cool design though, really creepy. Definitely fits, um, fits their art style. And yeah, look at these, uh, more pencil sketches of this thing, which look fantastic. These are absolutely beautiful. And again, remind me a lot of the weird shit that I was drawing back in the day. 
I really got to get back into it, guys, because it's been a while. I went to art uni, basically, and they kind of, like, made me lose my interest in art because I hated it so much. I, I don't even want to get into that, but maybe in the future video I will. But <laughs> I'll, I'll do that one about my drawings later on. But for now, just covering these lovely pieces of art. So we've got more of the giant warrior looking really creepy, really cool. Love the... Just the, it's got the biomechanical sort of style, very Giger-esque as well, but definitely different. It's got its own sort of unique style, which I love. And we've got that beautiful archway again, which I don't know what this is from. So you can let me know in the comments below what the weird archway is from. And we've got this creepy demoness la lady looking, again, very H.R. Giger-esque, but sort of less mechanical in a way. It's more biological, more architectural these designs, but there's definitely a heavy Giger influence on his art style, which is great, because Giger is one of my favorite artists, so uh, this is really cool. More of that. You know, I'd love to see this guy doing album cover art. That would be sweet, because he's uh, definitely very good at, at um, the, the drawing side of things as well, assuming he's the one who put together the drawings, which I don't see why he wouldn't be. There we go. More of this. Now we've got the sculpture of this this creature looking really sweet. Again, lots of those skeletal shapes. Definitely um, has a similar sort of influence as um, Giger when it comes to lots of skeletal shapes and stuff like that. And um, another callback to Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind with the Ohm or Omu or whatever, however you pronounce it. They released a figure of this thing. I don't know whether it was Figma or a company like that. Very similar to Monster Arts. Super expensive though. Like I think the, this thing was like 20 centimeters long and it costs like 500 freaking bucks. And I, I saw it and I thought like, oh my god, this thing is so beautiful, and I'm such a huge fan of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and I really wanted it, and then I saw the price, I'm like, okay, dear, dear freaking god, like, Monster Arts figures are already super expensive, and then this thing is just like, three Monster Arts figures worth of price at the very least for one Omu figure and like it's it was articulated and everything and all highly detailed and it looked beautiful as you can see here just like this sculpture here and oh man I'm still so bitter about the price tag because I would have got it immediately if I could have but yeah this is the original sculpture that thing is based on and it is a beautiful rendition of Miyazaki's Hayao Miyazaki's original design it's just it's very faithful to it it's just kind of made 3d as opposed to anime and it's just brought to life with beautiful sculpting and detailing and it. uh, it's gorgeous here we've got a little display of the garden well, not the garden the the jungle from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind the toxic jungle some little plants from it has a little display piece which is also really pretty and sweet and it goes well with more of the the insects from the jungle uh, I have a video doing a review of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind on my channel as well. I highly recommend you check it out because and check out the original movie itself. It's on Netflix at the moment, so it's pretty accessible. It is like my favorite Miyazaki movie and one of my favorite animes or movies of all time. So yeah, I'm just really glad to see these, these sculptures in here. They're really sweet. He just brings these, these creature designs to life so faithfully and they look really beautiful. I'm definitely going to spend a lot of time just gazing at these in the, in the book later on. Wow, look at that. More of the... This is that, that like that weird flying one with the... I love the sound in the film when this thing's flying around. That kind of creaky sound and it has its big fangs and trying to bite the characters in midair as they're going free fall. And it's a uh, great film. And this looks absolutely phenomenal with these insects. Oh, look at this one with the big mushroom thing and them flying around it. Oh, that's... I love this. I, I really want to see these things in person. <laughs> these look great. And again, the fact that this book is in Japanese doesn't seem to really matter, because it's almost all pictures, which is freaking awesome. I love that. I wonder where it was printed, too. Uh, I hope it's printed in Japan. That would be pretty good. It might be printed in China, because everything's made in China these days, but it'd be interesting to see. Uh, there we got some more of the, the um, concept art and stuff like that, and more shots of the, the, the insects, and... Wow. 
I wonder what this is. It's kind of like this cool banner design with the big um, colossal titan skull and the omu. The om. We've got some more concept art of how the, the, the um, ohm comes comes together. I like the, the leg of it here. That's pretty cool. You can even see the little ball joints in it, which is nice to see that kind of concept art because, uh, they yeah, they did make this into a super articulated figure. So that's really sweet. Wow. Okay, and here we got all the pieces coming together where you can actually see the figure being put together and that looks like a, a, a um, digital version of it and like a, an actual plastic version of it all coming together all the bits so yeah all of this this is all specifically detailing the making of that figure and you have the eyes here which actually has eyes that you can flip around so they can turn from red to blue which is really cool and yeah it just from what I've seen it moves like a real insect so uh, I'm so bummed out that I couldn't get my hands on this thing it was a lot. Uh, oh, and look at that grotesque. I don't know if it'll focus well, but again, you'll see it in my next video about the book. This grotesque mouth that it has hidden under its all this weird mouth arms or whatever they're called coming out of the front here. So that's really cool to see. It's got these really grotesque teeth under there <laughs> that we never see in the movie or the manga or anything. And got more of the forest here, more of the different a different articulated insect by the look of it coming together or, or sculpture or something look at that all the background stuff of it being put together all these little dioramas oh and these are this one's been cast in translucent plastic that's interesting maybe to make its eyes pop out more oh and this drawing is really beautiful i love the root system Right there, that's really beautifully drawn. It reminds me of some art by Roger Dean, who is another artist that I absolutely adore. He he's done a lot of um, album covers for like seventies and eighties progressive rock bands predominantly, and his stuff is beautiful. British artist Roger Dean. Look at that! More the insects all coming together. Really sweet level. These little drawings as well. Yeah, just more drawings and behind the scenes uh, stuff about how they're being all cast and put together all these little displays. That's sweet. You got like, <laughs> what is this? I think that's a type of clay or something or some tools, which is nice to see finally. Because I, I want to see some more of the actual sculpting process. I, I wonder if there are videos of uh, of him actually sculpting on online. That would be nice to see as well. More of those insects. These are this is the one with the big mushroom where they're like flying around it, and you can just see the the book is really well put together. I love the effect of um from a graphic design standpoint. I love the effect of having this image up here with the white panel with the the line drawing kind of coming up around it and the, all the yeah. It's just well well put together as a book all round. Got the making of all of the weird mushroom and all of those things and. This video is probably getting a little long, and you can barely see what what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna try and skip through it a little faster. And I, I apologize that you can't see it as clearly as I would like you guys to see it. But again, I'll do that. I'll do another video about that. So this section, more of these weird bugs, looking freaking awesome again. Love the displays. I wonder where these things are now. And oh, okay, here we've got that weird. Another, like, weird witch lady thingy. I don't even know what this is, but it looks creepy as hell, and it's a really cool uh, display piece. Again, very reminiscent of a H.R. Giger artwork. Like, this guy definitely was inspired by Giger to an extent. I, I, got, I gotta say that, because this is just uncanny, some of these forms here. I mean, it is different. That You can tell that this isn't the same art style, and he's got his own unique style, but you can tell that it kind of comes from a similar place, and that there are influences there. And Oh, look at this thing. This is like a creepy demon face. I like it. Look at all that, those details and just the elegant shapes and the curves. That is sweet. Sorry about the glare. But look at that. Nice red, really creepy looking thing. Look at his nose up there in the, up here in the photo here. Yeah, very creepy. Love it. Okay, and we got some... I don't even know what these are. These are like mechs. 
Very interesting. Lots of weird, like, trinkets and bits of ornaments and a dog there with looks like he's wearing glasses. It's actually really cute. I don't even know what that is about, really. Okay. <laughs> Something really, really funny happening with the, uh, the lady and the dog's nose is in a very inappropriate place right there. And it's got weird humanoid legs and arms. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It looks like one of those, um... Looks like they're costumes for theater or something like that. That would be a really freaking creepy theater show with all these sort of type type of costumes and designs. Wow. Okay, and then we got some photos of him from childhood. Look at that. We've got Takea as a little kitty. And he's playing with stuff. There's a photo of him with a bear right there. I think it's a stuffed bear or something. Yeah, look at that. And a doggy. That's cool to see. I was, I was hoping there would be some photos of him somewhere. Just to kind of show us some of the artists. To get us to know him a little better. Oh, there's like an Ultraman poster thing where you put your, your face in there and you can be the Ultraman character. Nice. And is that it? There should be one or two more pages. Okay. There's him where he's a bit older and, again, more dead animals and bears. So I guess this is where he gets his fascination with um, corpses and things from. You can see that there. So bears and looks like deer and stuff. Interesting. I'd love to know more about his backstory because I do hear that he did grow up sort of exposed to a lot of this stuff. We've got a turtle, a little baby bear, and some raccoons, and stuff, and dead albatross, and fish, massive fish. Wow. And we come to the back of the book, the last pages, and we've got little doggy with the glasses again. I'm sorry, it's so terribly glary and bright. There we go, you can actually make it out now. There we go. And it is printed in Japan. That is lovely. So the only thing on the on all this weird um, Japanese writing at the back here that's in English is this little section at the very bottom. I don't know if you can even make it out, but but it says Takayuki Takeya, 2020, Jinko Sha Ko Ltd. Printed in Japan. So yeah, that is very cool to see. Let me get blank black page and then the book ends so yeah that is my very long video of my unboxing and initial thoughts to the uh takayuki takeya art book from 2020 with all the shin godzilla stuff in it this one in particular because that's again i don't remember what it's called i'll it might be a little weird because it's probably called different things on different listings because the japanese thing english translation can be really iffy but yeah, um, I'll have the link, the name of it in the description and the title of the video, so you'll know which one. But yeah, it's a really cool book. I highly recommend it. Like even, I recommend it almost above the Art of Shin Godzilla book, just for the sheer amount of photos. Like there's, like the stuff in this book, the Art of Shin Godzilla that I really love, is all the same stuff that's in the Takeya book. It's just this one has, aside from that, a lot of like shots of landscape and stuff and a bit more like the CGI stuff, but it's got a lot of text and like layouts of office buildings and stuff like that and, and a lot of, I don't know, it's got some of this sort of like CGI stuff. You can barely hold up the book, it's so massive actually, but I feel like you get, despite getting some shots like this and stuff like that, with a bunch of this weird stuff, you get a lot of pages that are like this. Whereas, you're pretty much guaranteed, if you open up this book, on like any page, you, you can, you're gonna get some lovely images, some really detailed artwork, and it's all beautifully put together, so I give this book a strong recommend. I'm, I'm really glad I got this thing, actually. 
So yeah, I've been rambling on for a very long time now. This this video wasn't meant to be that long, but I ended up going through the whole book with you guys just because uh, yeah, I couldn't resist. I, I didn't want to just cut away and, and make it as, as brief a uh, look at the book as I did with the Shin Godzilla, um, Art of Shin Godzilla Unboxing, which I still need to do another video on, actually showing the, the montage of the whole book. It's just a huge book, so I, I need to get some free time for that. But yeah, that is it for this video, guys. I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be a radiated vinyl. Over and out. Bye.